What's up guys, how's it going? It's that boy Reggie here and welcome to another video. Today we have Geography Now Australia. So this is a video about, of, of course, Australia, but like I'm guessing it's they're gonna discuss a bunch of different things, you know, geography, culture, I don't know, stuff like that. So, you know, I decided to watch this video because I'm, I'm watching right now um, Eurovision and for some weird reason, you're, um, Australia is in Eurovision, even though they're like way out there, not even close to Europe, but I mean, you know, it's whatever, right? Um, anyway, you know, I decided, hey, every time I react to a country in Eurovision, I'm going to watch a video about their country, like, you know, just explaining stuff about their country, you know, just to learn a bit more, just to be a little more educated, and you know, I just, I just like to, you know, learn stuff about other places just fun right so let's check it out let's see what Australia has to offer I know like you know the, the stereotypes right like uh, all the animals like there's a bunch of animals that can kill you right like crocs snakes spiders sharks more snakes kangaroos yo I've seen videos of like kangaroos and they look like super buff and they just like square up at you they're like yo that's that's pretty creepy but yeah let's learn a bit more about it are you guys ready i'm ready let's go all right everybody let's just all get it off of our chests koalas and kangaroos boomerangs did you reduce sydney melbourne uluru crocodiles cockadoos hey. everything that hey. will kill you hey. shrimp on barbies that's not true that vegemite stuff that tastes like poo coral reefs and platypuses oh platypuses Pla platypus platypi but yeah see like all, a bunch of animals that can kill you all right, now let's actually learn about the freaking country. Thank you. It's time to learn geography. Now! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Paul Barbato. Today's gonna be Australia. You know the drill, let's dissect the flag. The Australian flag has a blue field with a Union Jack on the upper hoist corner to represent that it was a former colony and a current commonwealth of the nice, United nice. Kingdom with a large star under it representing the commonwealth and the five stars on the right, the Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Crucis to the right representing the Southern Cross constellation. All right, hmm. that was fun. Now let's discuss about the borders. Now, obviously, as an island nation, or rather large one, but still an island, Australia doesn't have any borders with any other nations, but that doesn't mean that Australia doesn't have some rather intriguing parameters. The country divides itself up in a rather intriguing way. Like the US, Australia has states, not provinces. There is a difference. Six of them, and each one kind of has Six their states, own okay. flair and quirks, like Tasmania, known for being crazy. Where things get a little interesting, though, are the territories. Australia has three domestic internal territories and six overseas territories, oh. technically seven. Seven, if you include the Australian Antarctic Territory, even though the Antarctic what? Treaty kind of bans anybody from claiming Antarctic soil as their own, which we will find out in future episodes that a lot of countries do a wonderful job at ignoring. The three internal territories are Northern Territory, Capital Territory, which is basically just the capital city of Canberra and some extra space around it, and the confusing little tyke Jervis Bay Territory. Jervis Bay was bought and developed to give the inland capital Canberra access to the sea, and eventually Jervis Bay split from the capital. However, it's still counted as part of the capital in elections it's a little confusing even though it really doesn't have much going for it except for a small navy base and beaches that it kind of took from other neighboring towns the most dramatic border area though would have to be the middle of australia for years this slab of yo look just look how massive australia is like i've never actually thought about it but just how much of australia is inhabited it can't be much right because like I feel like a lot of it is just, like, really dangerous. Like, just desert. No water. I don't know. Again, that's just that's just me, I guess, with stereotypes. I don't know, but it just doesn't seem like... I mean, I definitely wouldn't want to live, like, right in the middle of it, right? Just in the desert. No water. No, no nothing. No infrastructure. I don't know, but maybe I'm wrong land didn't exactly quite know how to distinguish itself and has gone through four transitions in the past century. First, it was all South Australia, which didn't quite make sense yeah, because yeah. parts of it touched the I northern parts of Australia. So it split into two, one state and one territory. That makes more sense. And then for four years, it became South Australia and two territories, the new one being called Central Australian Territory. <laughs> then finally, it changed its mind and went back to being Northern Territory. Cool. Central Australia is kind of like your girlfriend at a restaurant. What do you want? 
What do you Whatever. want? It's not that simple. Finally, we've reached the overseas territories. Although Australia has over 8,000 islands under its sovereignty, six of these what? islands operate as distinct territories, some of which sustain themselves with permanent populations. They are Ashmore and Cartier, the Cocos or Keelings Islands, Coral Sea Islands, the Heard and McDonald Islands, and the popular holiday spot, Norfolk Island, and the pleasant Christmas Island that Never gets even attacked heard of by any huge of these. coconut crabs every year. Finally, oh, Australia dang, is home big to crabs. arguably the most micronations in the world. I bet, Places yeah, like 8, the Principality 000. of Wye, Rainbow Creek, the Empire of Atlantium, and more. These nations were developed by either small groups of people or a single person because they were doing things like protesting taxes and wanted to claim autonomy, or they were just kind of bored and decided to amuse themselves. But still, hey, they tried. I bet. All right, now let's talk about the landscape, shall we? What shall we do today, Timmy? Okay, not all of Australia is Make an island or okay, only about inhabit an island. Okay, so besides Antarctica, Australia is the driest continent on the planet, which explains why, yes, 85% of the population lives along the edges of the country. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's exactly what my question was before. He just answered it. Wow. Wow, I should have just waited. So 85% live on the edges. Yeah, like I would imagine so. Like. Who would want to live in there? And I mean, if you live in there, you know, no offense. No offense. <laughs> Within 50 kilometers of the coast. Nonetheless, a lot of places, specifically around the coasts, actually have very temperate and even tropical landscapes. By the nice. north, you find tropical zones and wetlands and rainforests. By the far edges on the east and west, you can find subtropical zones with lighter forests and plains. A little bit inland, close to the interior, you find grasslands and flat stretches of semi-arid terrain. In the southeast by Sydney, you find temperate, cooler, arid land with semi-tropical yet slightly dry areas with an abundance of trees and plants. Then, of course, you have Tasmania, which is on a completely different level of green. Then we reach the deep interior where we hit the great deserts like the Great Victoria and Great Sandy Deserts. This area is famously known as the Outback. Okay. The Outback is essentially the area of Australia with long open stretches of red and orange desert that lays out beyond the horizon with few sparse populations of people that can be found anywhere. It has a dry, rocky, rugged terrain that everybody assumes is teeming with dragons? a variety of poisonous insects and reptiles. Ooh. And, well, I mean, it kind of is, but still, there's more to it than just that. Oh, and don't forget Lake Hillier, that strange lake that is mysteriously naturally pink for some strange reason that baffles scientists. Now, if there's one why, thing do that people, really epitomizes us... Do people really not know why? That's really cool. That's really, really cool. And, oh man, maybe later on, I, I I also want to watch a video about, like, all the different animals, because it's just insane. You see, like, that was a Komodo dragon, some really giant spiders and crabs, crocs. Don't they have, like, the largest crocs in the world? So, I mean, yeah, like, I really want to check up on that, so look for that in the in the future. <laughs> Australia, it would have to be its world-renowned beaches and coasts. People flock from all over the world just to enjoy the beautiful, pristine atmosphere of a real, authentic Australian <laughs> beach. Just remember to put on your sunscreen, though. Oh, Australians I bet the sun is like... have a joke where they can tell who the ignorant tourists are. It's usually the ones who think they'll be totally fine sitting out in the sun for more than 20 minutes. Skin nah. cancer rates are actually exceptionally high in Australia, and the population has acknowledged the precautions that they need to take. Now, we all know that Australia is home to some of the most unique and curiously distinct animal species in the world not found anywhere else. Else. However, Australia is also known as the home of many feral species. Australia has over hmm. 50 invasive species that were brought over to the land from areas Rabbits? mostly in Europe, and over the course of nearly one and a half centuries have bred and spread Ooh. like wildfire all over the country. Animals like the European rabbit, red fox, water buffaloes, goats, pigs, even camels, and worst of all, the famous cane toad. They've all gone wild and have cost the Australian government billions of dollars in environmental damages and maintenance. Yeah, I don't really know how to transition into the demographic. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's demographics. Today, Australia has a population of about 23 well, million. I, people. I thought they had now, more. To well, many I mean, outsiders, Australia is kind of known as the place where the British sent their prisoners. Yeah, yeah. First of all, that's rude. Second of all, that's only like kind of half true. Yes, during the early years of Australia's colonization from the UK, droves of convicts were sent to penal colonies in Botany Bay, which is now in present day Sydney. Over 165,000 convicts, about 25,000 of which were women, were sent over the course of 80 years. Although the British weren't the first ones to discover Australia, it was actually the Dutch. As they came, they 
they named the land New Holland and the adjacent island next door, New Zealand, after the province of Zeeland oh. in the Netherlands. However, as we'll soon discover, the Dutch were really good at discovering places, Someone but else kind of not so good at colonizing yeah. and maintaining those places for themselves. However, most of Australia's population came from natural colonization from British non-convict nationals. Some would argue that Australia was kind of like the UK's version of Operation Backup Plan in case of America goes crazy. After the American Revolution, the UK tried to compensate for lost colonies by re-establishing new ones, and Australia was hot on the list. Yeah, yeah, about yeah, I was 85% about of the population is European. Asians make up the next largest minority of about 12%, mostly coming from China and India and other Southeast Asian countries like Vietnam and the Philippines. And by the way, yes, Australia does have black people, not many, but before the Federation began, Africans, mostly from sub-Saharan countries like South Africa, Mauritius, Zimbabwe, and Sudan, have historically resided in Australia. It wasn't until the 60s when African assistance programs allowed many Africans to study and eventually move to Australia. Okay. Today, they make up about 1% of the population. One demographic of people that commonly gets overlooked, though, would have to be the native Australians, commonly known as Ab the Aborigines, yeah. which make up about 3% of the population. I've heard about those. See, Aborigines not... are a very unique and distinct people group that come from hundreds of different tribes, each with their own language and dialect, spread throughout the north, south, and central regions. Today, Aboriginal rights are a huge hot-button topic in Australian legislation, and about 22% of the land of northern Australia is Aboriginal-owned. In 2013, wow. Aboriginal groups actually banded together and decided to kind of make their own little state called the Murawari Republic, independent from Australia. The Australian government, though, doesn't really recognize this claim and just kind of brushes it off with a meh, as long as they don't cause a civil war attitude. Well, as you can see, a lot of people have what? to live in Australia. I didn't know that. So basically, there's a state there that technically just belongs to the aboriginals but not really does that make sense i don't know i guess basically they just kind of look the other way uh, australia like the government just looks the other way and they're like yeah yeah sure you're independent good for you but really they're not huh i didn't know that who would have thought australia but now let's see how australia interacts with the rest of the world Friends Australia zone. is, let's just put it very simply, a very popular country. If this was high school, Australia would be on the top of the social ladder, hands down. Everybody knows something about Australia. When it comes to friends, though, Australia not only goes for the cool kids, but also the strategic ones. Of course, Australia gets along with many of its Asian neighbor nations, specifically China and India, as large numbers of people from those nations live in Australia, and they do great business with them as well. Oh. Australia gets along pretty well with the islands of Oceania, except Fiji. In 2006, Australia refused to back up a military coup that overthrew the government in Fiji, and since then, things have been a little weird between Ooh. the two countries. In terms of their best friends, though, of course, New Zealand would have to rank in the top level, and they are basically... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always get their flags confused. Like, I can never, um, like, if I were to see a New Zealand, New Zealand flag, an Australian flag, I will most likely confuse them. But now, now that I've got an explanation of, like, the, the Australian flag, I won't. I know now. Australia has, like, an extra star on their white. I know. Basically like siblings that share a very similar culture, like the stars are language, white. That's, that's and what histories I mean. <laughs> as former colonies. Whereas the UK also has a high priority on Australia's entourage as they make up the largest demographic of people ethnically and as migrants in the country. But finally, we reach the USA. The USA and Australia kind of have a little crush on each other. Australia Aww. is always there to back up the US in times when allies are necessary. And the US, well, I mean, we Americans... We just love Australians. We love their accents. The accents. We love their culture. Outback we love Steakhouse. Their accents. We love their spunky Australian attitude, and we love their sexy, sexy accents. Almost any Australian that comes to the US is immediately loved and welcome, even if they are slightly sociopathic. One sentence with that accent, and we are smitten. We love you, Australia. In conclusion, Australia is just everybody loves Australia. Stay tuned. Austria is coming up next. Is that it? Wow, so I guess Australia is like the, what's that animal, the, the capybara, right? It's like a really big rodent looking animal, but it's like, you've seen pic, like, well, I don't know if you have, but I've seen pictures of like them just chilling with like alligators or crocs, um, with like snakes, with hippos, with any other type of animal. Like, it just seems like it has beef with no one, except for maybe Fiji. So yeah, I mean, I guess Australia is like the capybara of animals, or of animals, the capybara of like countries. But that was interesting. That was very interesting. So 
uh, I learned a lot. And yeah, like my question was answered. Um, yeah, like 85% of the people live on the coast, which makes total sense, right? So, dang, that means 15% of the people live actually like in the outback. That's insane. Do you guys live in the outback? L let me know. If you're watching this and you live on the outback or in the outback, let me know. Um, you know, just tell me about it. Tell me your experience. And do you guys ever experience like animals coming into your house? Like, like dangerous animals like snakes or crocs or something let me know i just australia seems like really interesting to me honestly like especially because of the animals i don't know but yeah like just let me know if you're australian let me know some stories of like animals going into your houses because those freak me out but like i really enjoy reading about them so yeah just let me know uh, anyway, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell so you guys can get my notifications. This was That Boy Reggie, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.